Hello and welcome to the Wisconsin Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Daisha and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items to share. First, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time, and they will be able to respond to you directly. This is one of many different sessions happening today, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website for others you may be interested in. And finally, this presentation is being recorded and it will be available at strivescan.com slash Wisconsin. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, Valparaiso University. Good evening, everyone. My name is Winston Jones, um, undergraduate admission counselor at Valparaiso University. Um, definitely the counselor for your territory. So happy that you all had the opportunity to join us this evening. Um, I apologize if you hear a little background noise. Um, my girlfriend's taking a class, so bear with me there, but also bear with me through all the information I'm going to go through because it's going to be like NASCAR. So Valparaiso University has been around for about 150 years. Um, I did get my Bachelor of Arts and MBA from Valpo, so I am an alum. I'm very proud to say that as well. Um, overall, we are a liberal arts institution, but we have grounded ourselves with sound professional training while still giving you a holistic collegiate experience. Um, so we do have five academic colleges, the College of Business, which is AACSB accredited, the College of Engineering, which is the number 16 undergrad engineering school in the nation, College of Nursing and Health Profession, which is a direct admit nursing program, College of Arts and Sciences, which holds everything else that we have, meteorology, biology, chemistry, pre-dentistry, pre-law, pre-med, everything in that realm, then Christ College, uh, which is one of the third oldest honors college in the nation right now. As you can see, we do have accolades for our best teaching, but that's not what the best, that's not the only thing that we're good at. Um, I think we do a great job offering services and support to our students. Our career center is especially very nice and unique. They do workshop, cover letter workshops, resume workshops, uh, mock interviews. They'll set you up with your internship. We actually have our own uh, hiring platform that helps people get jobs on campus and off campus, and also connecting us to companies that our alumni work with as well. Um, we also have several different learning centers, HESI Center for Math and Engineering Majors, Writing Center for Any and Everyone, Academic Success Center for Any and Everyone. Um, all these resources are free for you and to help ensure that you actually succeed in school. The AARC is Access and Accommodation Resource Center to help prevent any barriers from truly preventing you to succeed on campus and in college. Um, counseling Center, Student Health Center are two resources that are at an all-time high priority, especially in higher ed dealing with the pandemic. So things you want to keep in note, looking at other institutions. Um, I think we do a great job with student involvement. University Programming Council is literally a group and organization that's surrounded around making sure that students have events and are engaged and are supported in all the different ways. Uh, for, you have the opportunity to get involved in frater fraternity and sorority life, about 17 different opportunities. Uh, through those on campus, also tons of service trips. Um, faith life is something that you can make as big or as small as a part of your uh, experience here on campus. We are an independent Lutheran school, but we still accept all walks of faith. Um, tons of fine arts opportunities. You don't have to be in the major or department to get involved in those, and also tons of intramural and club sports as well. Uh, I can brag about having an intramural basketball championship under my belt, so you know it gets a little competitive. Um, I also think we do a great job offering cultural learning opportunities. The like Gandhi King Center is like a cultural hub on campus where the Office of Multicultural Programs and the Office of International Programs are located. Um, in the Office of Multicultural Programs, there are several different student organizations, the Black Student Organizations, uh, Latinx and Valparaiso for Excellence, Asian American Islander Pacific Coalition, and then also Alliance, our LGBTQIA plus group. Um, also, there are Smart Connections, which is a peer mentoring group for upperclassmen to just show freshmen and lower classmen the ropes of campus. Tons of different cultural campus events. One of my favorites is the World Banquet, um, where all the different cultures represented on campus come together and celebrate themselves holistically as a community. And then about 33% of our students also get involved in study abroad opportunities. Yes, we are Division I AA, so if you have those ambitions, I encourage you to seek out those opportunities. Um, I did walk onto the football team my freshman year here and played for about a year and a half. 
Um, residential life, I'll be the first to tell you, no, res no freshman residential hall would be too glamorous, but everything would be sufficient. Um, you live in a 30 mile commuting radius. Um, there are four other residence halls on campus. Um, that's more to come when you actually get to campus. So another big thing is visiting. You have to visit when you get an opportunity. Um, Valparaiso University or Valparaiso in the community itself is very nice and warm and inviting, about 33,000 residents, um, tons of community events from farmers markets to popcorn festival, because um, Orville Redenbacher is from Valpo and that's where he started this company. So we have events surrounded around that. Um, Indiana Dunes, the National Indiana State Park is only 15 minutes away. Chicago life, the downtown atmosphere is only an hour away as well. So a lot of different opportunities at Valpo. Um, most important thing is to apply when you get the opportunity. Application is free. Uh, we are test optional. Um, our scholarship priority deadline was November 1st, but that was just departmental. You still have the opportunity to grab merit scholarships. And that's kind of the biggest portion of your financial aid package. You can see our bracket here. It's also published online. Um, also want to file the FAFSA because that just opens up a lot more avenues for scholarships, grants, and then loans as well. And just because you file the FAFSA doesn't mean that you're accepting loans. You can still accept or decline those as well. Um, please reach out to me if you have more questions. Like I said, this is going to be some NASCAR, but check us out online. Reach out to me personally. I'm always happy to help students find their way. And yeah, come check out Valpo. You have to visit when you get the chance. Thank you. Thank you, Valparaiso University. Our next institution is Drake University. All right, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I am Ethan Fickow. I'm a senior admission counselor with Drake University. We are located in the beautiful city of Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, for those of you who have not been through our city before, it's about the same size as Madison, Wisconsin. About 650,000 people live in Des Moines, and yet Drake is the largest university in Des Moines at just 3,000 students in the undergrad programs. So that means we have a lot of opportunities, not only in terms of internships and professional experiences, but also the entertainment venues. There's a very healthy balance of permanent residents in Des Moines and college students. It's not overly saturated. There's not too much uh, vehicle traffic. There's plenty of places to park, plenty of places to hang out, very low cost of living. And we're gonna run through a few other bits and pieces about Drake today. But before we do, a little introduction about myself. I'm actually from Waukesha, Wisconsin, originally, and I recruit in the entire state. So if you have any questions about majors, scholarships or life on campus, the residence halls, you name it, go ahead and send me an email. I'm gonna pop that into the chat uh, as soon as I'm done presenting here. But I'd love to connect with you either virtually or at an in-person coffee chat at a Starbucks or at an in-person visit on our campus. So a little bit about Drake. Uh, as I mentioned, we are a, a medium-sized campus, about 3,000 undergrads, which is a perfect average class size of about 25 to 30. So you're not gonna be stuck in a lecture hall of 300 plus, that's great. All of our classes are taught by professors, not teaching assistants. So you're getting it straight from experts in the field who have uh, worked in your industry and then also regularly keep in touch with recent graduates and other opportunities for internships to help you get that ball rolling and build that rapport with you right from day one. So it's a 10 to one student to faculty ratio. They get to know you by first name. You're not just a number on their attendance sheet. So that really, again, helps it feel like, okay, they're genuinely invested in your future. They're not just doing this to collect a paycheck. They're not just doing this for research opportunities. They really care about what they do here and it's their calling. And they, they really uh, are invested in the time and effort that they put into you and then hoping you can get some great opportunities from their interactions with you. So we have more than a hundred different programs to choose from at Drake uh, across six different colleges. And what's nice is once you're admitted to Drake, you can start that program on day one. You do not have to slave through two years of gen eds first. You don't have to jump through a lot of hoops and hurdles after that. You can start right away and figure out, you know, is this what I want to do? Is there something I want to specialize? Or maybe realize, okay, I tried it, but maybe this isn't going to be for me long term. Let's try something else. That's actually what I did. I started out as marine biology and then switched to journalism. Very different program, right? Still finished in four years. It's quite all right if you don't have it all figured out just yet. Almost 40% of our incoming freshmen have zero clue what they want to study. They come in undecided and they're still finishing on time in four years and they still have access to advisors, tutoring and everything else to help them figure out what it is that they do want to end up studying. So, and a uh, fun fact, we are division one in athletics. So that means we actually have kind of the best of both worlds, best of the small universities in terms of academic one-on-one -on -one learning environments, but then also the best of big schools in terms of, you know, big sports atmosphere, state capital environment, 
Uh, we're actually in the same uh, division as um, Valparaiso. So we're in the Missouri Valley Conference. So we go head to head with them quite a bit. It's a pretty good competition. They always give us a run for our money. And then, of course, believe it or not, 70% of our students are from outside of Iowa. So you would actually be in the majority for our students on campus. You would not be the odd ones out. I brought in about 90 students from Wisconsin last year. So and more than half of which were from, I'd say, the Milwaukee, Madison, and then also like the Green Bay Appleton areas as well. So plenty of people to room with, plenty to carpool with home on long holidays. Freshmen can bring cars to campus, though. That's not a problem. I'd say Des Moines is about a five-hour drive from Milwaukee, four from Madison, and I'd say maybe six from the Green Bay Appleton area, depending on which route you take. So very, very doable. We also have a good airport in Des Moines where you can get some good flights for decent prices. So lots of easy ways to come in and out of town for long weekends and holidays. And then, of course, the highlight of Drake is our live mascot. This is Griff, Griff 2. We also call him George because uh, Griff 1, our prior mascot, he's still alive. He's just retired. They live together. So it's like, okay, well, which Griff are you talking to, right? Uh, he's a real dog. He's actually a certified therapy pet. He loves to work with our students on campus, as well as local elementary schools, the Animal Rescue League of Iowa. And he has his own social media pages where you can follow him online, too. I think his handle is at uh, Drake U Griff. He's on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram working on getting him to TikTok, so stay tuned for that. But if you come visit uh, for our camps, take a tour, maybe meet with a professor and everything, Griff will be there too if you wanna take a picture with him. He loves to meet new people. He's content to sit there all day, just let you scratch his ears, so definitely worth the trip out there. And now let's quick run through the application process real quick. So we are also test optional and we have two different application opportunities in terms of our website. It is free or run the Common App. Totally doesn't matter which route, which route you wanna go. We accept and review both the exact same way. It's rolling admission. We are not early action or early decision. So just because you're admitted doesn't mean you're on the clock or under any obligations of any kind. You have until May 1st, just like everyone else, no rush. And again, I said test optional. So that means you don't need to submit an ACT or SAT score. You can either do an essay on any topic you want, or you can do an interview on the phone with me on, on the phone or over Zoom. That will entirely take the place of that ACT or SAT score. So this gives you a lot more power and a lot more of a voice to represent yourself in that application process. And you'll still be eligible for the same exact scholarships as everyone else. You are not being disadvantaged any way, shape or form by going test optional. Of course, uh, submit the FAFSA and we do have a lot of other merit awards on top of that, including uh, the presidential scholarship, which I'll get to in just a moment. This here tuition guarantee, this is something that separates Drake from a lot of our competitors in the sense that it is a promise to lock in the price of tuition at the same number all four years. It will not go up. We cannot take this away from you. You cannot lose it based on grades. So this is going to save you a lot of money by the time you reach senior year. I would ballpark it around uh, seven to $10,000 when all is said and done. So it's kind of like another scholarship if you want to think of it that way. Now, this is the sticker price. It looks pretty daunting, and it is, but nobody pays that full price. And it's because of that presidential scholarship, which I mentioned earlier. For you guys, for seniors, it will be twenty two to 26000 per year, all four years, in addition to any other merit scholarships that you can get on top of that. And we are finding that our students are ending up where they want to after graduation. 95.5% of all grads from the class of 2020 had a full-time job or were in grad school within six months of graduating. And that was based on a survey response rate of 97%. So we know this to be a very real number. 92% are finishing within four years. We wanna get you in and out in a timely fashion, right? So we'd love to have you come by for a visit. I'm gonna, again, drop my contact information in the chat. Please uh, go ahead, feel free to take out your phone too. If you open the camera, you can actually scan this QR code and add me as a contact into your phone. I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. And enjoy the rest of our colleges presenting tonight. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, Drake University. Our next presenter is the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Sam Merrill. I am a regionally based uh, admissions counselor uh, here in Northeast Wisconsin. So I really appreciate everyone joining us tonight. And I'm just making sure I get my PowerPoint uploaded here. Okay, I'm gonna drop in my information here in chat um, before I take it away with my presentation. Okay, so I, and with University of Nebraska-Lincoln, we are part of the Big Ten um, Athletic Conference, which is D1, and that is also an academic conference as well. We are a, uh, the highest top tier of a research-based institution, and as our namesake, we're also located in Lincoln, Nebraska. 
um, as a land grant institution and also our flagship, our university is gonna offer over 150 different academic programs with direct admission, opportunities to participate in our honors program, over 500 student organizations. Oh no, I'm talking and no one can see my presentation. Forgot to hit the share screen. At least you're getting the gist of it. All right, hopefully we can see that now. Um, thanks for the shout out. Um, hopefully that is all good. I'm sorry. Um, over 500 student organizations, so lots of opportunities for students to get involved. We also have the lowest um, out-of-state tuition in all of the Big Ten, um, and we are about just over 25,000 students total. Um, and out of that chunk, about 20,000 are undergraduate students. So we really are focused on the undergraduate education here at Nebraska, and about a third of our students come from out of state like yourself. Um, also, we're located in the state capital of Nebraska, which is about 300,000 people. So students have access to many businesses and entertainment, um, really close to campus. Um, campus is a kind of a traditional spaced bubble. And then as soon as you walk off, you're right in the robust downtown Lincoln area. There's not a whole lot of traffic around the city as well. Um, so you can definitely get to walk to everything in about 20 minutes to a half an hour max from your resident hall. Like I mentioned, um, we have over 150 different academic majors here at Nebraska, and we're home to collaborators. We're a diverse community of scholars who have come together to create new knowledge, build on each other's experiences, and forge a better future. You're also a part, you, you'll have your own story, and you're a part of that future together. Um, our faculty are going to be extremely involved um, within different research within their major and in their career path, and they're sharing that with you in the classroom. We also have nine different colleges, so you can um, directly apply into your um, program off of our application. Um, the only majors that have specific um, requirements are going to be the College of Engineering and the College of Architecture. They require some specific high school classes and performance requirements. Uh, and I encourage you, if you are interested in one of those majors, to either contact me or reach out on our um, admissions webpage that I dropped in chat. Um, we also do have a law college and a dental school on our campus. And our pre-health programs are extremely robust uh, with part, our university partnerships with the University of Nebraska Medical Center, which is just up in Omaha. Um, Nebraska students get the best of both worlds. You have access to a Big Ten education, but yet still kind of a close-knit community. Like I mentioned, we're just over 25,000 students total, um, but we still maintain a faculty to student ratio of 17 to one. Um, you'll meet most of your students from every single state in over 114 different countries. And fun fact, um, our average class size is going to be about that 37. And that's taking into consideration some of your lecture halls. And so about 40% of our classes have 35 students or less, which is great. So you're still maintaining that close-knit opportunity uh, to get to know your, your, your peers in your class and getting to know your professors. You also have opportunities to engage in research their professors, participate in pre-professional organizations, complete internships, make friends for life, and experience all the Midwest has to offer. Um, I might be a little biased, but I also think we have the best fans in collegiate uh, athletics, and we really have a highly support network of faculty and staff who want to see you succeed. Um, this is just a quick little campus map. Um, it's not all encompassing. We actually do have three campuses. This is our city campus, which compromises about 85% of our classes, and our east campus is just over um, 10 minutes away to the east. That's predominantly our College of Agricultural and Natural Resources and our Law College and our Dental School. Um, it is a one-year live-in requirement for university housing coming from out of state. There are lots of options if you plan on staying um, in housing all four years as well. And yes, you can bring your vehicle down to campus. Going over our admission requirements, we have assured admissions um, as long as you are meeting these requirements. And so to apply for admission, you can use our institutional application or the common application. Our application does open on August 1st and we are rolling admissions. What that means is we are constantly 
re, uh, receiving and reviewing applications. And most students tend to get an admissions decision in about a week. Um, we are guaranteed admissions if you meet those high school core classes in the performance uh, requirements that you see on that screen. We are also test optional for admission purposes and our scholarships, and you're automatically considered for academic scholarships um, based off of your application. So looking at your GPA and a test score if you do submit it. About 75% of our students all do receive an academic scholarship. Um, so I encourage you to check out our website. Um, we do have a scholarship calculator on there or all you can always connect with me and uh, we can see you might be eligible for. Um, our scholarship deadline, if um, the la latest we can review um, with the test is going to be that February 1st. Um, and we do um, review for our merit awards all the way until May 1st. I'm gonna skip over that important date slide. Um, but definitely go to our campus visit website, check out some videos and sign up for a campus tour. And if you've got questions, um, that's my contact information there. So I'd really appreciate it. If you do have questions, just shoot me a text or an email and I'll be happy to get you to the right person. Thanks so much. Thank you, UNL. Uh, I would like to send a quick reminder, if you have any questions for our presenters, please feel free to use that Q&A button on your screen to send your questions over. If it's for a specific school, please make sure to mention that in your question. Our next presenter is Michigan State University. Thank you so much. My name is Tanya Kurzawa, and I am an admissions counselor for MSU, and I'm happy to share with you tonight some information about Michigan State. Uh, some of you may be familiar with Michigan State and know that we are located in uh, East Lansing, Michigan, which is the lower central portion of the mitten portion of Michigan. Fairly easy to travel to, whether you're coming by car from the state of Wisconsin. A lot of people take the train. There's an actual green and white Sparty clad train that comes from Chicago. Uh, so that's fairly easy to do. And then there are several airports uh, within close distance uh, proximity of our campus. So we would love to have you come visit us sometime. Um, MSU is a large research-based university. We are also part of the Big Ten. Um, and we have a lot of diversity in terms of our student population, as well as what you can study and how you can go about studying at MSU. Uh, a few photos here. Uh, my favorite place to be on a football Saturday is um, in the Spartan Stadium. Now, this is a view from the student section, um, but I sit over here. <laughs> uh, but a great place to be if you are an uh, a fan of football or any Big Ten athletics. There's a lot of different events happening on our campus at all times of year. Um, we also um, wanted to let you know that we are very a very large campus. Uh, we are one of the top 10 largest universities in the country. Uh, we're proud of our size, um, and we know that because of our size, there are things that we need to do to help students feel comfortable um, and to get involved and find their people on campus. So I'll talk about a few of those things as we go along. Um, but in terms of size, we have about 50,000 total students, 40,000 undergraduates, and a freshman class that usually ranges anywhere from 8,200 up to 9,000 students. Um, not only will you find that there's a lot of diversity in terms of who you're in class with and who you're working with. We have students from all over the state of Michigan, all over the US and over 120 different countries. Um, you will also find that you have a lot of diversity in terms of what you can choose to study. You can come in with no major, being an exploratory major, you could come in with knowing exactly what you wanna do and you might have two or three interest areas and that's fine as well. We have a lot of students who double major or even triple major if they're particularly ambitious. Uh, our programs fall within 17 degree granting colleges and I can tell you students that the most popular majors amongst uh, last year's freshmen uh, were in the College of Engineering, the College of Business, the College of Natural Science, and in the College of Social Science, like psychology or criminal justice. And I think you'll find that at most colleges nationwide. Uh, we do have a few programs that we offer that are kind of like small liberal arts college programs on our large campus. Again, one of those ways that we make our large campus smaller and more personal for our students. So you might wanna take a look into some of those. 
Uh, we also encourage our students to get involved outside of the classroom, not only to get more experience and to build their experience um, extracurricularly, but also to meet people with similar interests. Some of the ways that our students build their adventure at MSU, getting involved in research, the students in one of our science labs, but in fact, we have research across all disciplines on campus, and uh, we have research students that are freshmen all the way up to seniors. So you can start doing research right away or wait until you're a little more ready for it. Um, some of our research positions are paid, some are volunteer work. Uh, we also encourage study abroad. So a lot of our students have thought, I want to travel abroad. Well, there's a good chance we have something you're interested in because we are one of the largest education abroad in, uh, programs in the country with over 275 different programs offered on all seven continents. And then, of course, we have student organizations that we would like to encourage you to get involved in, whether you're a performer and you want to continue playing music or dancing or doing theater. Uh, maybe you want to get involved in uh, volunteering or perhaps you want to be part of a fraternity or a sorority. All of those things are available to you on our campus. Uh, one of the things I wanted to quickly highlight was that our placement rate is at 95%, which is 12% higher than the national rate. Uh, we really are proud of what our students are doing upon graduation. They're finding employment or they're getting into graduate schools or medical school programs. Uh, we have a lot of alumni worldwide that come back to support our students, whether you're doing a co-op or an internship, or you want to work back in your home state or uh, ex expand out and travel a bit and go to a different state or even another country. Uh, we have engagement centers on our campus. Our campus is really like its own small city of 40,000. Uh, we have 26 residence halls spread throughout campus. And in each residence hall neighborhood, we have people that are there to help you. We have tutors, we have counselors, we have nurses, uh, we have advisors and faculty that are right there in your living space so that you can easily reach out and ask for help when you're on campus. What does this cost our students? An out-of-state student is gonna pay about 51,000. Don't let that number scare you. As our uh, friend from Drake said, there's a lot of merit awards out there uh, for students coming from other states. Um, I will encourage you as my colleagues have to please fill out the FAFSA and then any school that you're looking at, you'll definitely wanna look at their scholarship database Put yourself in there so that it can raise any flags for scholarships that you might qualify for down the road. Never too early to start looking at scholarships, whether you're a high school junior or a senior. Uh, we do a holistic application review. We look at your transcripts, your essays. Uh, we have a program set up so that you don't have to submit a letter of recommendation, but you absolutely can if you choose to. And then I will run off to the slide, which shows you um, our admissions visit page. If you want to come see us, we would love to have you on campus. Uh, we get a lot of students from Wisconsin that come over and uh, take a peek for themselves and take a tour with the current students. So come visit us if you get the chance. Thank you. Thank you, Michigan State. Our next presenter is the University of Tennessee. Hello, I'm going to get my screen ready here. And then we'll get started. Okay, hi. Yes, I'm Courtney. I'm the Midwest Regional Rep for the University of Tennessee. Uh, we are located in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is around a 10 hour drive, a little uh, under or over, depending where you're at. Um, so, about 10 hours from Milwaukee. And we are located in Knoxville which is home um, to a nature-loving, adventure-seeking, artsy kind of town. So we're less than an hour from the Great Smoky Mountains. So we have a, a fun location right in our backyard. But the cool thing is, is within 10 minutes, there's access to so many outdoor things. So our campus is right along the Tennessee River. We have over 800 miles of hiking trails, biking trails. Uh, mountain biking has become very popular. So there's tons of outdoor activities for you to do uh, in Knoxville and the surrounding area. We have a vibrant and historic downtown area that has live music, art venues, food trucks, uh, so many activities to do and that's walkable from campus. So you'll definitely find something to do during the week and on weekends um, and you don't have to worry about being so far away from home. Uh, there'll definitely be something for you to do. 
We are Tennessee's flagship institution. So we're the land grant institution founded in 1794. Uh, we are the Tennessee volunteers. So we really believe in that volunteer tradition um, and service above self. And we look for that in our applicants, um, as well as while you're here on campus, you will, uh, you will feel that volunteer spirit uh, throughout your duration. We are a research one Carnegie classification, so that's top research. Um, so for academics, there's definitely opportunities for students to excel. We have the most Goldwater scholars in the SEC, and we're a top producing school for Fulbright scholars as well. We have the UT Space Institute, and we have produced 10 astronauts out of the University of Tennessee, and we co-manage the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. So that is a national lab and UT co-manages that. And that lab is around 30 minutes from our campus. So again, access uh, to research opportunities in academia that'll set you apart um, when you're looking at jobs or to continue on to grad school. We are division one and we are part of the SEC and we have over 24,000 undergraduate students, total population, we sit just above 30,000 and we do continue to grow and our out-of-state market does continue to grow as well. So you will not be the only student uh, from up north uh, at the University of Tennessee. We have over 360 majors for you to choose from, and those majors fall within our undergraduate colleges. So we've got nine undergraduate colleges. We've got our Herbert College of Agriculture, College of Architecture and Design, College of Arts and Sciences, Haslam College of Business, College of Communication and Information, College of Education, Health and Human Sciences, our Tickle College of Engineering, College of Nursing, and the College of Social Work. Um, so with those, there are some competitive programs, our College of Architecture and Design, our Tickle College of Engineering, and our College of Nursing all have a different review process for admission. Um, our Tickle College of Engineering, if you meet the criteria, you will be admitted. College of Architecture and Design and our College of Nursing is competitive in nature. So uh, we just had, as, as it's been mentioned uh, throughout tonight, uh, November 1st, our early action deadline has passed. Um, but there is still time to get applications in, and I will talk about that in a minute. So all of our majors can be found online, and they fall within one of these wonderful colleges on campus. The Tennessee Student Experience. So uh, every new student at the University of Tennessee gets what's called a Vol Success Team. So you will have three staff members that are assigned to you to help with your transition to college. You will have an academic advisor, an academic coach, and a one-stop counselor. So they can help with career planning, resume building, financial aid information and, and bill payments and uh, scholarships. So every student is insured a team to help support that transition while you're at UT. Students are required to live on campus their first year. We have lots of housing options and three different housing styles. So there's definitely opportunities, whether you want to have community style or more of a private setting with a private bathroom, you can choose from that. We always say, and it was alluded to already tonight, you can make a big campus smaller. So there's 400, over 400 clubs and organizations you can get involved in. Uh, intramural clubs and sports, and then sorority and fraternity life are very popular with about 24% of our students participating. And of course, athletic events that students can participate in and attend as well. We do have study abroad and strongly encourage students to do that. We study abroad um, in over 50 countries and have 300 different program options to choose from, anywhere from two weeks to a full academic year. Um, so definitely check some, that out if that's something you're interested in. UT application. So you can apply via our website or the Common App. We accept either. We do have a $50 application fee and accept fee waivers. We are a self-reporting institution. So after you submit your application for admission, you will need to complete the self-reported academic record. That is phase two of the application process, and you'll upload an unofficial transcript. What we're looking at in our holistic review process is the rigor of your high school curriculum, your senior year coursework, we want to make sure you're still preparing uh, for your transition to college, the essays that you submit, optional test scores, extracurricular and leadership activities, and again, that volunteer experience because we are the Tennessee Volunteers. So I, I did mention, but to highlight that, we are test optional. You do not have to include your test score. That is your choice. Our scholarships for out-of-state students start at a 24 ACT or an 1160 SAT. So I usually use that as a guide for my students if you're looking at applying with a test score or not. When in doubt, go without is what we like to say. And you can always reach out to me. I'll put my information in the chat. 
Our deadlines, as I mentioned, November 1st has passed, but please get your uh, application in by December 15th, regular admission. You will get a decision in mid-February and you will qualify for scholarships if you apply by December 15th. And we are open to visitors. And there's my information, but I'll throw it in the chat. So thank you so much and go Vols. Thank you, University of Tennessee. Our final presenter is Iowa State University. All right, fantastic. Thanks everyone for being here with us and sticking with us, with us through the presentation. My name is Emily Ingeman, and I am a regional admissions counselor with Iowa State University based here in Wisconsin. So very happy to be sharing information about your cyclone adventure with you this evening. Just to jump right in on the big facts and figures about Iowa State University, we are a large public land grant research institution, similar to many of our peers in this presentation this evening. Um, so there are many opportunities for our 31,000 total students, 26,000 undergrads um, to get involved in all sorts of innovation and research and really craft your own adventure at Iowa State. To share a bit more of context on where we are located, let's pull up the map here. Uh, so we are located in Ames, Iowa, which is just about 35 minutes north of the city of Des Moines. Um, so as our friend from Drake shared, we're about five and a half hours away from the Milwaukee area, four and a half from Madison. Um, so hopefully that can give you context that we're that familiar distance away. You're still in the Midwest, um, but you still can have that nice, exciting adventure of journeying somewhere out of state uh, to try something new. Uh, Des Moines and Ames being kind of centrally located in the state also does afford a lot of opportunities for internships that you're not too far away from other large population centers in the Midwest as well. When we talk about uh, just kind of the other scope of life at Iowa State, as I shared, just over 31,000 total cyclones. About 46% of our students do come from outside of the state of Iowa, all 50 states represented, 109 different nations represented, and there are usually around 700 or so students from Wisconsin. So I always like to say that you can meet someone maybe even from your same high school if you come to Iowa State, but also somebody from the complete opposite side of the world. So it is a very great vibrant mix of our student life. Speaking of student life, there are 900 student clubs and organizations, which I think is just an astonishing number. Um, so there are everything from just for fun clubs to tons of service, communities, uh, volunteering, multicultural identity organizations, um, and anything and everything to also support your academic journey. So tons of wonderful opportunities with organizations. On the academic side of things, we have over 100 fields of study, which I'll cover a little bit more in just a moment. Um, and certainly our students are going on to be successful with um, a great placement rate after graduation. So all of that together kind of culminates to one amazing adventure you can have at Iowa State. And we'll just talk a little bit next about some more of those academic areas. So within Iowa State, that's gonna be your overall umbrella, but you would find your individual academic home within one of the six undergraduate colleges. Uh, similar to many others, we have, again, all the opportunity of a large school, but we also make sure to scale it down to the student experience. So all six of these colleges have their own career services office, their own study abroad offices, and other resources that are very specialized, because we know that a student who's going on to be an engineer versus someone who's going on to be an educator do have different paths and different things that they need, so we are sure to accommodate that with you. But you can see the sampling of all six colleges that we have, a couple highlights. Uh, are that we are very well known within engineering with 14 different majors within that. We have a five-year professional accredited architecture program, and we're also number one in the Midwest for apparel merchandising and design. So very comprehensive and diverse in our areas of study. And I would certainly encourage you to check out the website to get more specifics on any individual majors. To continue on, just talking a bit more about the scope of student life, um, Cyclones are very active and engaged in campus life with those 900 organizations. Maybe you want to do that or study abroad. We do have programs on all seven continents, or maybe you want to get involved with our honors program, which in our first, year's honor, first year honors program, there is a guaranteed uh, research opportunity for you as a second semester freshman. So whether it's that, 50 intramural sports, 50 club sports like broom ball, which is pictured here, or battleship H2O, uh, there are many ways to have fun and get involved and also just accentuate that academic experience even more. To share then our process for admissions, when you're talking about coming to Iowa State, there's really two main things you need to know. First is to meet the minimum course requirements by the time you graduate from high school that are listed on this slide. 
As you can see, the first four pertain to all six colleges, and then the last two colleges of liberal arts and sciences and engineering do have some additional requirements. Um, so just be sure to look at those if you're considering either liberal arts and sciences or engineering. Then we uh, use a measure called the Regent Admission Index to determine admissibility, which is essentially a formula that we will run your academics through, which you can see there on the screen. Um, three times your ACT, add that to 30 times your GPA, and add that to five times your number of years of core courses in high school to generate the score. If you've met the course requirements and you have a 245 or higher, you're automatically admitted to Iowa State. I should also mention here, we are test optional though for this year's seniors. Um, so we do have a way to evaluate applications if you do not have a test score. Also, final note, just on admission, that all six of our colleges are direct admit, so you can know right from the start if you apply and are admitted, you're good to start in your area right from the get-go as a first-year student. A little bit more just to kind of wrap everything up into a nice uh, culmination here for you. We do have some very highly ranked academic programs and, again, have a great reputation as a research-based land-grant institution. So academics are going to be stellar across the board at, at Iowa State. We do have a very rapid response application turnaround. So I know seniors, you usually want to know your decision pretty quickly. And we do have one of the very quickest turnaround times in the entire nation for that. As I just shared on our last slide, direct admit into your college is very important to know that you absolutely can study what you want to study from the beginning. And last but not least, I do just want to mention, of course, that we are a member of the Big 12. We have D1 Athletics. Uh, so also the energy and excitement of Cyclone Nation is a part of our campus. So I'll just wrap it up to say, please do come visit. We have one of the top 25 most beautiful college campuses uh, that we're blessed to have as our institution. So we would love to host you for a visit so that you can learn more. But there's my contact information and thank you for tuning in tonight. Take care. Thank you, Iowa State. I would now like to invite all of our presenters to join me on camera as we have time for a brief Q&A. All right, my question to you all is, what advice would you give to someone going through the college search process? And feel free to answer in the order you presented. Um, visit as many universities as you possibly can and do as much research as you possibly can, whether that's online or in person. So that's info right there. I would say on top of that, you know, uh, don't, restrict yourself based on geography or cost or availability of programs or like the acceptance rate if it's low or really competitive. Uh, don't let any of that get in your way. You know, definitely keep your options open as uh, he mentioned, you know, big schools, small schools, public, private, in-state, out-of-state, the whole nine yards. Because at this point, we're it's still very early in the process. Don't feel like you have to wait to visit a campus until you're admitted. Uh, a lot of us, I think all of us would agree, it, it's more than uh, great to have you come visit even before you've been admitted, because then you can still kind of get that gut feeling uh, when you visit. It's like, could I see myself here over the next four years? Because that instinct, that gut feeling just can't compare with what you see with all the pictures and videos and even these uh, uh, live presentations uh, over Zoom. You know, it really getting there in person really helps uh, nail that down. And of course, I understand, you know, high school schedules are busy, parent work schedules are busy, but if you can try to come uh, visit our campuses while school is in session, you know, uh, rather than over winter break or rather than on weekends, just because then you'll get a, a more genuine feel for an average day in the life of a college student there and actually see people walking back and forth to classes, maybe even have a chance to meet with a professor if you book that visit a couple weeks in advance. So I'd say don't restrict yourself uh, for anything like that. That would be me. Tonight is a struggle. <laughs> so I guess my piece of advice is that everyone's going through this together. Uh, if you're a senior, I feel for you. You're in the thick of it right now. And if you haven't figured it out, you have tons of time. If you're a junior, sophomore, freshman, if you're a mom, you're a dad, you're a, a guardian, we are all here to help you. So reach out to us. Answer our phone calls. It's calling season for all of us. And everyone's laughing because everyone knows. We're here to help you. So pick up the phone, text us back. We're not scary. 
I agree, Sam. So I would say to you students, this is the time of year when I hear from parents and high school counselors that there's tears, that there's frustration from these students. And I would just say, take a deep breath and relax. You're gonna land where you need to land um, come next September and it will all be okay. <laughs> I'll just try and not take it too seriously, uh, put your best foot forward, show these colleges all the great things that you've done and all of the hard work that you've done. It's gonna work out. I echo what everyone said, and then I'll just add, check your email because we are communicating with you. So please check your email. And if you choose to not come to us, let us know so that when we stop calling you and texting you and bugging you. That last one's great advice, but I will just add kind of unrelated to emails and calling and paying attention to that. Do try to keep uh, pay attention to scholarship deadlines, especially out of any scholarship or any deadline you're going to pay attention to. You want to make sure you make it in for those scholarships that might have an earlier cutoff date um, so that you give yourself the very best opportunity for all the merit aid that you might be uh, eligible to receive. So definitely pay attention to those scholarship deadlines um, as best you can. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you all for such wonderful advice and for your presentations this evening. We are out of time, so I'd like to share my screen with you all one more time to share a few final remarks. So thank you for our guests who are able to join us and those who are watching on demand. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. I encourage you to check back on the schedule and sign up for more sessions tonight that you might be interested in. You'll also be able to find the recording of this session as well as all other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Wisconsin. Thank you once again. I hope you have a wonderful evening.